Bonjour, Weiko. After a big hiatus, French smartphone brand Weiko has returned to the market with the Weiko T50. This may not be a phone that runs on flagship hardware, but it looks just as attractive as an expensive flagship from just looks alone. It's got extremely slim screen bezels on a 6.6 inch display with a punch cutout, a glossy green finish with a slim camera bum, and it looks so sleek and lightweight to the touch that not many other phones in the same class can offer. And I'm going to tell you more on what makes this phone so much nicer than other mid-range phones. Unlike most sub-1000 ringgit mid-range phones, the Weiko T50 has a really nice construction where the screen isn't separated from the body, which gives it a sleeker profile than other similar class devices. There is a headphone jack on the top and a USB-C port at the bottom. The nano SIM tray accepts two nano SIMs and unfortunately, the phone doesn't support micro SD storage expansion. The power button is located nicely within my thumb's reach and also serves as a fingerprint reader, while the volume rocker is located conveniently slightly at the top, which makes it a very nice device to hold when you're on a phone call. The phone's 6.6 inch IPS display is very bright and colorful despite lacking the blacks of an AMOLED display and a fast refresh rate. Though I wish Weiko could have included a 90Hz refresh rate, but this is a very responsive touch display that I face no issues with typing and navigating around. The phone is unfortunately not a Wi-Fi L1 certified device, so you wouldn't be able to play Netflix videos in HD, which is quite a shame as I would love to binge my movies on this adequately sized and bright display. The Weiko T50 is powered by a MediaTek Helios G85 chip and is supported by 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, which is sufficient for most basic smartphone tasks and lightweight gaming. Although the phone ships with Android 11 out of the box, it doesn't come pre-installed with any bloatware or an ad-infested launcher that affects the overall user experience. Everything feels very stock-like and even the ringtone selection brings back some nostalgia if you have experience with older Android devices, which is very unlike older Weiko smartphones. For mid-range phone standards, the Weiko T50's main 64 megapixel camera is a pretty good shooter when lighting is sufficient, but like other similar cost cameras, it doesn't do well for dim indoor lighting. But fortunately, Weiko has included a more useful 8 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor instead of two low resolution cameras, though the ultra wide camera isn't the best in class. Although the Weiko T50 doesn't have the largest battery capacity at 4000 mAh, it has no problems lasting me a full day of heavy social media use. It also has one of the fastest charging speeds in its class at 40 watts, which is a total lifesaver when it runs low on juice. Overall, the Weiko T50 is a really nice looking smartphone that offers a clean software experience. Though it sadly isn't the most exciting mid-range phone to own in the market, this is nonetheless a good comeback for the brand and we definitely look forward to see more from them. So that's pretty much for my review of the Weiko T50. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and be sure to subscribe to us for more videos coming right up and I'll see you guys in our next one.